Hi, I'm Morley, and today we're gonna make this 3D printer enclosure that doubles as a standing desk. I recently decided to dive into the world of 3D printing and ordered myself a Prusa 3D printer kit. I realized pretty quickly that I would need some sort of enclosure to keep this little rascal away from the 3D printer, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to add another workstation to my tiny apartment workshop and office space. I designed the enclosure in Fusion 360 around a 3D model of this 3D printer that I found online. My goal was to have the enclosure all built and ready for the printer to move in by the time the printer arrived and I had it assembled. So with that, let's get to it. The frame of the enclosure is a really simple design made entirely from 2x4s. I used the same basic frame construction as Bob of I Like To Make Stuff, who built a much bigger enclosure and workstation with room for his multiple 3D printers. I got my cut list from the Fusion 360 model and used my circular saw against a speed square to cut all the 2x4s to length. This project uses four 8-foot 2x4s in total. The back of the enclosure is a single piece of quarter-inch Luan plywood. I use some much nicer Russian birch plywood for the shelves and the desktop. The top shelf is made from half-inch plywood, but I use three-quarter inch for the bottom shelf and the desktop. In Bob's video, he tries half-inch plywood for his printer shelf, but found there was too much sag, and his printer was rocking on its feet. Definitely something you want to avoid. 3 quarter inch plywood is plenty stiff for my Prusa 3D printer, and probably for most consumer grade printers. Thanks for the tip, Bob! Before each cut, I laid masking tape over the cut line to avoid tear out. These edges would be highly visible, so I wanted them looking really nice. The frame is held together with glue and pocket screws, and I pre-drilled all of the pocket holes before dyeing the pieces. I'll have a link in the description for this Craig pocket hole jig, as well as links for all the other tools and materials I used in this project. I decided to dye the frame of the enclosure black with India ink and leave the plywood shelves and desktop their natural wood color. I really love this contrast, and it matches the desk that I use as a workbench. This was my first time using India ink. It's surprisingly cheap and is super easy to apply with a rag and a brush. I was going for a deep jet black, and I found that applying a couple coats, waiting a few minutes in between, worked really well. If you just madly rub the India ink into the wood, it doesn't really give the ink a chance to soak in. Dyeing the inside of the pocket holes was a little annoying, and I think if I were to do this project again, I would pick up some pocket hole plugs, dye those black, and then fill the pocket holes after I got the enclosure all assembled. I also dyed one side of the quarter inch Luan plywood backing piece. This creates a really cool effect in the final piece, where the back of the enclosure is like this endless abyss that still subtly shows the wood grain when the light hits it just right. While waiting for the India ink to dry, I gave the undyed plywood pieces a quick sanding up to 220 grit and finished them with three coats of Verithane diamond water-based wood finish in crystal clear semi-gloss. This finish is great for unstained plywood because it doesn't cause any yellowing. In between coats of the diamond wood finish, I finished the dyed pieces with two coats of satin wipe-on poly. Having never worked with India ink, I wasn't really sure how long to let it dry before applying the finish. But after a full 24 hours in the Toronto summer heat, the pieces were dry as a bone and the finish went on with no problems. With the really messy work all done, I let everything dry, packed up all the pieces, and headed back to my apartment to put this bad boy together. I started by assembling the two side frames flat on the floor.
Since 2x4s have rounded edges, a bit of the undyed end grain is visible at the joints. And if I were to do this project again, I'd take that extra bit of time to dye the end grain with the India ink. I did eventually go around with a paintbrush and touch up some of the more noticeable areas. Doing cabinetry work with 2x4s isn't always the easiest experience, but I was able to force everything into place with a healthy number of clamps. Then I could just tip up the side frames and start building up the enclosure. Since the frame stiffens with each additional piece, getting the last framing piece into place required some persuasion with a squeeze clamp flipped into expansion mode and some hits of the mallet. I set my pocket hole jig for 3 quarter inch material, the thickness of the desktop, and then drilled mounting holes on the inside of the top framing pieces. When using a pocket hole jig to join materials of different thicknesses, it can be a little confusing to know how to set the jig and what screw lengths to use. After a bit of research and experimenting with test pieces, I found that for this situation, I wanted both the jig and the screws to match the desktop thickness. But always experiment with a test piece. Your situation may not be the same as mine. A paintbrush and a bit of India ink makes these mounting holes nearly invisible. Next, I attach the dyed Luan plywood back panel with screws. With the rigid parts put together, now I could attach the two shelves with full extension, soft closed drawer slides. Penny was very curious about this part and kept trying to lend a hand. I sized the shelves and laid out the drawer slides so that the acrylic doors lay flat against the shelves and flush with the front of the enclosure. This will make more sense once you see me install the doors. I used some double-sided tape to get the drawer slides aligned with the enclosure and then came back with screws to secure them in place. I repeated this process for the top shelf. Before adding the clear acrylic sides, I needed to install some stops to hold the acrylic in place. These are just some strips of scrap wood that I cut and dyed with the India ink. I used black drywall screws here so the screw heads would blend in with the enclosure. For the sides and doors, I got some 2mm clear acrylic cut to size from a local plastic supplier. If you're like me and don't have a big shop, I'd highly recommend this over buying a big sheet from a hardware store and cutting the acrylic yourself. Where I live, acrylic is really overpriced at the big hardware stores, and many plastic suppliers will cut your pieces to size for a very low fee. I pre-drilled holes in the acrylic and used some little black framing screws to attach the acrylic to the stops. Thank <laughs> you. 
Before installing the doors, I added a couple more stops that give the top of each door a place to rest against. The way I wanted to do the hinges, I needed them to lay flat when open. I was having a hard time finding hinges that would work at my local hardware store until I remembered Piano Hinge. A six foot length of this stuff is really cheap and you can just use tin snips to create hinges of any size you desire. Piano Hinge is a bit flimsy, but these two millimeter acrylic doors are really lightweight, so I didn't need a super bulky hinge. You can see here just how little room for error I have in fitting the acrylic doors to the opening. I actually waited to order the acrylic until I had the frame of the enclosure all built so I could base the order on real world measurements. I attached the doors to the hinges with some little nuts and bolts that I have kicking around. By the time I got to the bottom two doors, it was getting a bit late in the day, and I was kind of rushing to finish. When you're using a hand drill to make holes in acrylic, rushing is not a mindset you want to be in. And sure enough, I forced one of the holes just a little too much and made a nice crack in the acrylic. In the moment, this was really frustrating, especially since I didn't have any spare acrylic. I took a few minutes to cool off, Realize that, in the grand scheme of the project, this is a pretty tiny defect, patched the crack with some super glue, and moved on. Without a way of keeping the doors closed, this enclosure wouldn't be very cat proof. So, I used some rare earth magnets to make door closures. Once I had holes drilled for each magnet, I mixed up some 5 minute epoxy to embed the magnets in the doors. The drill marks were a perfect guide for positioning steel screws that would hold the magnetic doors closed. A great part about using India ink is if you find an imperfection, it's super fast and easy to make the spot disappear with a paintbrush and a bit of ink. The magnetic closures work super well, but Aren't they supposed to keep Penny out of the enclosure? Penny. I punched a hole in the back panel so I could get a power cord into the enclosure and was ready to add the finishing touches. First up are these remote controlled, multicolored strip LEDs that I got on Amazon. Again, I'll have a link for these in the description. These strip lights are really easy to set up. They have an adhesive back, as well as these little clips that you can add around corners and things for some extra reinforcement.
Finally, I was ready to move the 3D printer into its new home. If you're interested, I have a whole separate video on assembling this Prusa i3 Mark 3S printer from a kit. I replaced the green outdoor extension cord with a proper power strip and got to work designing and printing a couple special features for the enclosure. I wanted a special place for the LED remote, so I designed this simple holder to mount on the side of the enclosure. This was my first 3D printing project, and it was kind of perfect. It involved figuring out tolerances around a real-world item, modeling countersinks, orienting parts for printing, all while being a relatively simple and approachable project. The only thing left to do was make some very unique doorknobs. I saw the doorknobs as a great opportunity to practice sculpting organic shapes in fusion. I'm not really sure why a banana popped into my head, but the second that it did, I knew it was the right choice for a surprisingly ergonomic doorknob. Sculpting the banana was a really rewarding challenge, and I am super pleased with how it came out. I am amped with how this project came out. The contrast between the rough jet black 2x4s and the clean plywood shelves looks so good. I've been using the 3D printer almost daily for the last few weeks, and aside from providing a stable print environment, the enclosure is so roomy, and it's so easy to access the printer from all sides, especially with the drawer slides. There's also plenty of room to add accessories like a dehumidifier. The top storage compartment is great for 3D printing accessories like my calipers, calculator, spare parts, rubbing alcohol, and I'm sure I'll fill it up with filament over time. I'm the type of person that likes to work in different positions throughout the day, so the standing desk has been a game changer for my productivity. I've actually realized that I like recording podcasts while standing up, so I'm really happy that I built all that range of motion into my concrete and wood mic stand. And of course, it's good to know that Penny is safe from the printer, and the printer is safe from Penny. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of my channel for all sorts of other project videos. And as always, have a great day.